Hope you're all doing okay this afternoon. My name is Sue Roffey and I'm going to read you a story this afternoon. Um, but before I do that, I just want to ask you a question. Do you recognize this little girl? She's really bothered about all the different things that are in her head and different ways of thinking. And some of those ways of thinking are helpful, like you can do this. And it's not all bad. And some of the ways of thinking are not very helpful, such as it will be a disaster. I'll never get out of this mess. Now, what we've done is that we've put in two different ways of, of thinking. And we've put characters for those different ways of thinking. We've done different characters for helpful, positive thinking. And we've done different characters for negative, unhelpful thinking. And what I'm going to do this afternoon is tell you a story called Dana and the Doom Merchant, which is about, in particular, one of those negative characters. And he's called the Doom Merchant. And he's the character who is full of the words that go, it's always gonna be like this, or it's never gonna be like that. And it's a story about moving schools. So here comes the story. Look at me now. Cool, confident, awesome. It's hard to believe that two years ago, I was a complete mess. I'm now in year eight at high school. And the biggest difference between then and now is who I listen to. No, nope, not teachers not family, not even friends. I'm talking about the voices in my head. You know the ones I mean, we all have them. Let me start from the beginning. When I was little, I was dead scared that bad stuff was gonna happen. And although most of the time everything went okay, I always expected the worst. And whenever something did go wrong, a voice inside my head said things like, yup, the bus is always late. Nah, it's never sunny at the weekend. And those voices made me feel horrible and helpless. My dad kept changing jobs, so I'd gone to several schools before I was eight. And with each one, I'd had to begin all over again, learning where to go, remembering names, catching up on lessons. And it was just the same when I started at Rushbrook Primary in the middle of year three, and I was sick of it. I felt so lonely, I could not imagine ever being happy again. Mum was her usual jolly self. Yeah, I'll make you friends. And Dad also tried to cheer me up. I moved to schools too and I was okay. And that made things even worse. Not even my parents understood. I was down in the dumps for a long, long time. And that had given a chance for the doom merchant to whisper his miserable, mis miserable messages in my head and make a bad situation even worse. Who? I can hear you say. So let me tell you. I first heard about the doom merchant from Mr. Cooper. Mr. Cooper is the school counsellor who visits Rushbrook and sometimes sees kids in his little office. You can see the picture of him there. He looks a bit like Santa Claus with a big long bird. And some students used to have a laugh and say they'd seen birds nesting in it and it was there to catch crumbs so could have a snack later. I'm sure he knew some of these jokes, but he never let on. He was all smiles and everyone in the school liked him. Anyway, he came and told our class about different ways of thinking and he described them as the voices in your head. Some of these can make you see the worst in everything and make you feel awful, but the positive ones on the other hand, help you see the best of things and help you bounce back when life is hard. 
Mr. Cooper helped us understand the voices by giving them names. Zip, for instance, is full of positive energy, helping people to be kinder to themselves as well as not being so hard on others. And although Zip can be powerful when given the chance, most of us do pay more attention to the dark voices and the positive ones. And the doom merchant is one of the nasty voices. I recognized the doom merchant as soon as Mr. Co Cooper told us about him. When I was miserable, he said things in my head like, you're never gonna fit in here. And you'll always be an outsider in this school. That made me feel sick and shivery. The doom merchant seemed to follow me around and whenever I tried to talk to people, he would be there, making it difficult to think straight. And I'd get all tongue-tied. I just couldn't get away from him. First thing in the morning, he'd be there. Why well, go to school? You never make friends. And at lunch, he'd be there again. Don't join in. The others might laugh at you. You always stuff it up. And on the way home, guess who? Look at all those other kids walking home together. You'll never have friends like that. I'd been at Rushbrook a couple of months when Miss Nettle, the music teacher, noticed I was on my own a lot. And surprise, surprise, she wanted to help. When she asked me to come and see her, I thought I was in trouble. But instead, she wondered if it might help me settle in if she arranged for me to have a chat to Mr. Cooper with his amazing Santa Claus beard. I was a bit worried about this at first. I mean, the counsellor usually saw kids who were mucking up and I wasn't one of those. But what have I got to lose? Anyway, my parents thought it was a good idea and going to see Mr. Cooper was better than doing maths. I didn't like maths. I climbed up the stairs to his office in the corner of the school. Mr. Cooper had lots of games in his office, like the ones where you've got to roll a marble around without it falling into any of the wrong holes. He also had all those lovely posters all around everywhere. You are worth it. This banana is smiling at you. Well, as I was rolling those marbles around, Mr. Cooper asked how I was feeling. He was really friendly and easy to talk to. I saw him a couple of times and then he went and had a talk to my class teacher. I don't know what he said, but soon afterwards, other girls began to chat to me and invite me to come with them to lunch. It took a while before they came real friends, but from that moment on, life just got better and better. And the doom merchant and his horrible voice slid away to the back of my mind and I stopped him hearing him whispering, interrupting and getting in the way. I decided Rushbrook was a good school after all, even though the toilet smelled bad, especially on hot days. And one of the teachers had a voice like a siren. But my friends were the real reason I looked forward to going to school. I like sitting next to them. I like talking to them. And I like the sleepover parties we had during the holidays. I bet most of you are really looking forward to some of that when all of the pandemic is over. It was even fun when Sarah's little brother ate too much chocolate cake and threw up all over my sleeping bag. It was gross, but we laughed and laughed and life was sweet until halfway through year six. You know, that's the last year in primary school. I'd been silently struggling for a while, but it all came to a head a few weeks before the end of term. And I was in the playground at lunchtime with my mates. And this is what happened. Everyone was excited. Everyone that is except me. We're going to have so much fun in high school. Audrey was jumping up and down like she was on a trampoline. I didn't say anything. It's gonna be great, sighed Tegan with a smile. What could I say? I can't wait to go to high school, added Sarah, looking all dreamy. I said nothing. I just stood there. All my friends were dancing about, hugging each other, and talking about the great times they'd soon be having. Next term, all of us were leaving Rushbrook and going to high school. Audrey and Tegan could not stop talking about what the teachers would be like at Crane Hill. Sarah and Shani would be in the same school as their brothers and sisters, 
And even Madeline, who usually never said anything much, was rabbiting on about how much she loved the grey and hill purple and white uniform and how she couldn't wait to wear it. But not me. Oh no. My parents had decided that I was going to go to a different high school. Instead of Crane Hill, which was just up the road, I was going to St Edward's College in the city. You can imagine what I thought and felt about that. It was going to be just me, all on my own. Just me. I told my mum and dad I wanted to go to Crane Hill. I'd explained all my friends were going there. I had pleaded with them, yelled at them, and then sulked in my room for days. I could do a really good sulk when it's called for, but nothing worked. Not the biggest tantrums, not even the silent treatment, which I kept up for days. Instead, my mum insisted that she knew best and I would get used to the idea. And that was that. To say I wasn't happy, didn't come close. It meant a bus ride each way every day, a long one. It meant a fancy uniform with a green blazer. I looked terrible in green. But the very worst part of it was that no one else I knew was going to St Edward's. None of my friends. No one else from Rushbrook. No one. No one. That was making me feel very scared, very lonely and very, very miserable. I was a mess. All my friends were yakking on about going to Graham Hill. They didn't notice me being really sad. I hadn't told them my parents had said I've got to go to St Edward's because I was hoping against hope that they'd change their minds. No one knew, not yet. I wandered away from Tegan and the others over to a different part of the playground. It was quiet and the trees made a nice shelter over my head. I liked it there. It was where I went when I wanted to think. But on that day, I couldn't think at all. Instead, there was a giant bubble in my chest and it was about to burst into a river of tears. So far, I hadn't cried at all, but I wasn't sure how much longer I could hang on. You remember the doom merchant? The nasty voice that gave me such a hard time when I first arrived at Rushbrook? Well, of course, this situation gave the doom merchant the chance to jump back into my life and make everything even worse. I sat there under my tree, not thinking about the warm sunshine, all the birds chirping, or even the smells of dinner from the school kitchen. All I could hear was the doom merchant. His scratchy voice in my head was like nails dragging down a chalkboard. You're never going to like high school. You'll never make friends in high school. You'll always be on your own at lunchtime. School will never be fun again. It suddenly seemed very cold under the trees. I shut my eyes and tried to block him out, but that made it worse. All I could hear were things like, no one will ever like you. You'll always be the last one picked for anything. And then the bubble in my chest burst. And at last I began to cry. And it felt like I would never be able to stop. I bawled my eyes out. I sobbed like a kid who dropped their ice cream on a hot day. I had never felt so helpless before. And then, just as I was at the lowest, darkest moment of my life, zip came by. You remember? Mr. Co Cooper told us about her, the helpful voice. Her timing was spot on just when I needed her the most. When the do merchant is a force for taking you down, zip is a force for lifting you up. Zip puts a different spin on things, offering other ways of thinking and helping you see there are some choices. Zip zoomed along the path near my shady spot, speeding along on an awesome skateboard. Zip had been, a been having a hard morning's work with a 14 year old boy who had scored an own goal in Saturday's match. He was beating himself up badly about it. 
it had taken quite some time to convince him that the whole world didn't hate him and he wasn't a totally bad person. That's what Zip does. Helps people think about the best that can happen and not the worst. Zip had been about to lie down for a rest near my shady tree when she saw I'd been crying. And through my tears, I heard a warm, friendly voice. So different from the sneer that had been seeping into my brain all morning. Oh, he can't have that. Zip looked up and caught sight of the doom merchant trying to hide up in the tree. He was trying to pretend he wasn't there. Ha, so it's you, I might have guessed. The doom merchant knew everything he said was a lie and that Zip would show him up for what he really was, a great big fraud. None of the negative voices are a match for Zip when she gets really cross. Zip, Zip didn't say anything for a while and I wondered if I'd been imagining things. But then, clear as a bell, Zip's words began to weave their magic spell as she laid down a little rap she'd just thought of. Little bit of truth, great big chunk of a lie, that's the doom merchant's modus operandi. You think that he's right, but he's really quite wrong. You've just got to make sure you are not strung along. Zip was twirling in the sunlight, very pleased with this little rap. To be honest, I was confused. I didn't quite get the message. What on earth was modus operandi? What was Zip trying to tell me? Would it help against the doom merchant? Zip carefully explained. Modus operandi is his MO. It means the way he works. It's what he does. He tries to convince you that everything is going to go wrong. He tells you stories that have always and never in them, but he's lying. That's not how things happen. And like all liars, he's scared of the truth. You just have to tell him you know better and to get lost. I wasn't sure about that. The doom merchant was a nasty piece of work. But the more I thought about it, the more it began to make sense. It was like a light suddenly came on. Of course the doom merchant was lying. If I'd made friends in primary school, I could make friends in high school. But Zit wasn't finished. She knew all about why I had been crying. That's his power. Often what he says has a bit of truth. When you're in high school, it might take a little while to get to know people. You might not have anyone to sit with at lunch for the first few times. I looked up sharp, sharply. That wasn't what I needed to hear. Zip zoomed around in a big circle on a skateboard and then came in closer. The doom merchant makes people think that if something happens once, it will happen all the time. He makes you focus on all the bad things until all you can think of are bad things. And then you forget about all the good things. That is much more likely to make the bad things happen. I nodded. That's what exactly had been happening. Hmm. So what are the good things, I asked. It's hard to think of any. That's the easy part. And as, the zips, and as Zip said it, she did a cool skateboard trick, flipping her skateboard right there in front of me. Well, for starters, let's think of what you have managed in the past. That will help you in the future. You made friends here, so you'll make friends at your new, new school. And you will still see your old friends because you still live close to each other. And while going to any high school can be quite scary, it can also be exciting. Think of all the new things you're going to learn to do, like experiments in science and gymnastics and learning to speak another language. I smiled. I really was looking forward to gymnastics and St Edward's did have a wonderful new gym. That was certainly something to get excited about. And as I started to think about all the things that were interesting and new, I began to feel more confident and less like crying. Sure, I was going to miss my friends, but I would make new ones too. There would be other girls in the same boat as me, not knowing anyone. I would be able to make friends with some of them. And suddenly I just knew it was going to be okay. Zip had shown me that there was more than one way of thinking about things. 
And that where the doom merchant's voice made me weaker, Zip's voice made me stronger. The doom merchant knew he was beaten. He's no match for Zip. He gradually melted away until he disappeared completely. And I was not about to give him the chance to get back in. From my bench under the tree, I could see that Sarah Teagan and the others had noticed I wasn't there and were looking around for me. They were still my friends here at Rushbrook and friends share both the bad and the good times. I took a deep breath and went back over and I told them the secret that I'd kept to myself for weeks, that I, wasn't go that I was going to St Edward's and not Crane Hill. I told them how angry and how upset I'd been about this, that I was getting used to the idea. It wouldn't be so bad, but I would really, really miss them all. Madeline gave me a big hug and Audrey said we, we should meet up after school once a week and swap stories. Everyone agreed that that was a great idea. And that's my story. What happened that day made a big difference in my life. Zip was right, of course. I did make friends here at St Edward's and I do still keep in touch with the Rushbrook crowd. As well as being friends on Facebook, we meet up from time to time at this great little coffee bar in town. I have friends everywhere. I do enjoy doing science and I did get to use the gym. In fact, it seems I'm a bit of a star in gymnastics. I'm going to be in the team to represent the school at the city games. Of course, sometimes things aren't that great. But now I know that these times will pass. I have learned a lesson I will never forget. Once or twice the doom merchant has had a little try to get back in my life and give me always and never stories. But now I know all about him and put him just where he belongs. And that's the end of the story. I hope that you people who are going to be moving schools in September have a good goodbye to your primary school and a good hello to your new school. Wishing you all the way, all the very best. Thank you.